for all the time you put into those. So next we have the Arts Centre and Philip Aldridge come talk to us for 30 minutes. Thank you. Kira, thank you. Um, just by way of introduction, I'm Murray Dickinson. I'm the Chair of the Trust Centre Arts uh, for, the, for the Arts Board. Thank you for the opportunity to, to talk with you today. We are here to, to ask the Christchurch City Council to renew its annual grant of $1.8 million to Timo Tiki Toyora, the Arts Centre for Christchurch. The Board is fully aligned uh, and aware of our obligations under our Act. Many councillors spoke on Tuesday of trying to find a way to make this work so we do not lose the Arts Centre as the centre of the Arts in Christchurch. We thank you for your support and would like to work with you to make a sustainable solution. We, as we have said in our written submission, we have offered to defer our depreciation for a couple of years. We have offered to dip into our hotel maintenance fund over that same period. This short-term compromise would substantially reduce the amount of funding required from the Arts Centre over the next two years. We have also suggested that the Council take over our annual insurance program uh, of over $1.1 million, absorb our Council rates uh, which are now $175,000 per year, and we've offered to seek further cost savings with the Council's assistance. This would mean that John Fussell's suggestion on, at Tuesday's meeting of a band-aid solution might very well work. However, those deferred funds must be replaced in years three and beyond if the Trust is to have confidence that the Arts Centre is to remain a going concern. This would require a funding agreement, which aligns with a suggestion from Councillor MacDonald, who called for a permanent funding solution. This would avoid the Arts Centre having to launch repeated funding campaigns in years to come. Campaigns like our current campaign, which has been funded by a kindly private donor. There are a number of other issues raised in the public meeting on Tuesday uh, that I'd like to address as Chair of the Trust Board. Firstly, we welcome Deloitte's report, which substantially backs the position of the trustees and the proposal that we, for funding that we put to the Council in last September. Additionally, we'd like to emphasise that the trustees have rigorously cut costs and continue to do so. The Trust carried out a severe restructure in 2020 and prior to applying for operational funding in the last LTP. Some positions were disestablished, others were downsized. The remaining managers all took salary cuts and the current director also took a 33% pay cut. Since 2020, we have added one maintenance position as we've opened five additional buildings and nearly doubled the size of our site, which is open to the public. In addition, we have brought in-house security and cleaning services to save money. Deloitte noted that further cost-saving opportunities were limited. Deloitte further noted that our 2025 insurance premiums had raised an additional $110,000 over what we had allowed for in our previous budgets. There was also discussions around our staff structure I'd like to explain further today. On the question of our number of our senior management team, our senior management team consists of 5.5 FTEs and a senior management group oversees a substantial number of volunteers and staff across 12 different departments, all put in long hours, which is unfortunately not unusual for a charity. The Trust Board is confident we don't have too many senior managers. On the level of remuneration of the management team, our senior management salaries in 2023 were $774,000. We benchmark our management remuneration against the market with the assistance of an external advisor. Our remunerations level remain below market and we have done internal comparisons against other cultural entities which are funded by the council and we believe our management salaries are lower. Though I'm not sure this is something to be celebrated. We also agree with the Deputy Mayor's uh, suggestion that a forgiveness of our council rates would lead to a reduction in our funding application by $175,000. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to be able to set out our situation to councillors. Um, I'm Philip Aldridge, I'm the director of the Arts Centre. Um, it's important that you hear from us directly and we welcome the dialogue. We haven't been able to have much of a dialogue. We met with council staff once last winter and once in January. And the information that we have gleaned, um, we have, um, that we'll talk about today, we, we've um, had to get through official information requests. Um, I'd like to firstly um, refute the suggestion that we're trying to force the council to take over the Arts Centre. It's actually the opposite of what we want. Uh, we're simply asking the council to keep funding the Arts Centre to save us from insolvency. 
Um, otherwise, the art centre trust will go out of existence and require a new owner. It's, it's not a threat. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, as Deloitte noted, the, the need for funding is real. Uh, unfortunately, the Deloitte report repeated some incorrect information, um, which was originally presented to councillors in a staff report of your workshop of the 26th of March. Um, it, that report contains, contains some serious errors and misdirections. Um, I'd like to address one in particular here, which is quite pertinent, which concerns the creative program. Um, the creative program, in inverted commas, uh, you've been told, um, had a reported budgeted loss of 800,000 last year. Um, our accounts have um, a line item, uh, which is called the creative team budget. And that includes a, a wide array of activities, um, venues, marketing, communications, uh, education, Tafari Tapari, the Mariat space, education, um, and as well as the artistic program. The arts program, which is a component of that, um, which is the essence of the arts centre in our city, um, is um, last year was 237,000. Um, it's smaller in 2024. It's not 800,000. It's also important, it's critical really, that you know that um, within that $800,000 budget, 100000 of it is an internal OPEX charge. Um, that would remain even, in, even if we were to get rid of programming. Um, there are 16 items within that, um, that budget, within the, the arts budget. Five are cash positive, and the rest bring in substantial funding from ticket sales, sponsorships, grants, um, and philanthropy. Um, this means that the investment of 100,000 raises an additional 600,000 from other sources. And this illustrates the balancing act that the trustees undertake. We strived to deliver to the act, which has some very specific and demanding objectives. These are statutory requirements, which includes uh, to hold the arts center as a unique and outstanding cultural center, which is a pretty high statutory bar. We believe we have to spend something to do that, although not a lot, to be the thriving creative hub that the Act specifies. Um, but we would not, and we'd never want to achieve that by not paying the artists, the musicians and the other creatives, as suggested in the Deloitte report. Um, did, the, did the accountants consider offering their services for free? Um, the Trust Board, we think that... Uh, we're doing the absolute minimum at the moment that allows us to be still compliant with the Act. Um, you've been led to believe that that's imprudent. In fact, it tells a story of extraordinary invention and effectiveness. As Philip has commented, it's been suggested that we put our creative programming on hold. Uh, the cost-benefit versus this, as Philip has outlined, is quite small. In addition to the... Uh, Balancing Act, which Philip has outlined, it would also defer, deter sorry, tenants who currently come to the Arts Centre specifically to be part of our creative community, hence reducing our future rental income. It would also reduce our ability to uh, raise sponsorships and donations to offset those costs. On the question of our overall lease income, we are fully tenanted. Our leases usually contain market rent adjustments every second year, ensuring our leases are at market rates. Regarding the future ownership of the Arts Centre, we have been misquoted in the press and in the meeting on Tuesday. We have not threatened, nor have we ever said, that the Council will be forced to take ownership of the Trust. But what we have said is that if the Trust fails, it seems most likely that the Council will receive the, the assets of the Trust. This is because we are constituted for the people of Christchurch and its visitors. However, as Philip has outlined, this is the last thing we want. We, would, we believe an independent entity is still the best and cheapest way to operate the Arts Centre. But the allocation of the trust to a new owner would be done by the High Court. This process is lengthy and costly, both for the Arts Centre and the next owner. The trust would have to fund these legal costs, which we, which we would do uh, through funds set aside for our 35-year maintenance obligations of the hotel lease. However, a new owner would have those lease, uh, those maintenance obligations under the lease and would have to replace those funds later. A new owner will still have the same statutory obligations as the trustees, maintaining heritage buildings, encouraging and nourishing the arts and culture within Otatahi Christchurch. 
there have been comments that this trust is taking a too narrow view of our statutory obligations. To the contrary, we are taking a very wide interpretation of our obligations. If a new owner took a more narrow view, i.e. property management company, it opens that owner to a challenge via the New Zealand court system. And the level of submissions received on the LTP and the public response to our campaign outlines the public interest in this area. Additionally, if the council is the new owner, it is unlikely the council would receive those same financial support that we receive in grants, donations and sponsorships. The agencies and supporters of the Arts Centre will assume the council can fund its own activities. It was also noted on Tuesday that the council provided the Arts Centre operational grants of $400,000 in 2010. However, since 2010, our insurance costs alone have risen by over a million dollars. This alone puts uh, our context on our funding requests. And finally, on the question of the Ducks Deluxe restoration, we agree with Deloitte's opinion that the return of the Ducks would not alter our financial position. The initial proposal put forward by Redux would have seen no financial benefit to the Arts Centre for over 50 years, with all returns accruing to Redux. This was unacceptable to the Trust. We remain interested in a subsequent proposal facilitated by the previous Mayor. However, Redux has walked away from that proposal. A full response is contained in our written submission. Thank you for the opportunity to provide us additional information. Uh, we've okay. just got a, a few um, uh, quick-fire responses to other points that you raised. Um, the Arts Centre is not independently financially viable, unfortunately, um, a position substantiated by Deloitte. Um, we are fully tenanted, as Murray says, at market rates. Um, and we note that the Deloitte uh, report agrees that the heritage nature of the Arts Centre's buildings means that it is unrealistic to expect OPEX recoveries to fully, fully cover costs, which is also the view of council staff. Um, maintenance is currently being deferred because we can't afford it. A high-level asset management um, assessment based on quotations uh, shows that we need an annual sinking fund of about 2.3 million. Uh, at the moment, it's not being fully covered. Um, the, the, the view that we have a narrow view of the act, um, but in fact, we, we've got a hotel, we've got a, a health technology center, we've got car parking venues, we do weddings, we do corporate events. Uh, we have quite a wide view, as Murray says, and we have 70 diverse organizations who are based at the arts center. Um, this is hardly a narrow view, but even if it were, I mean, we're, we're, the, the point is moot because we're fully tenanted at market rates. So we've maximized the income from the site. The, the economic benefits to the city are immense. Uh, we've got footfall of one million visitors a year. Um, those 70 organizations um, employ hundreds of people and they turn over tens of millions of dollars a year. Um, there was also mention last Tuesday of restructuring um, or possibly replacing the trustees. Um, you must recall that this is the same management and trustees which has just delivered the largest restoration of historic buildings in the country ever, on time and on budget, which isn't often the case. Uh, and yet those are volunteers. Um, don't forget, these are volunteers um, who have been criticized in this chamber. How are community organizations going to continue to attract the talent we need as trustees if they're going to be pilloried here? It's ironic that only a moment ago we were being celebrated as the poster child of the city's rebuild. That achievement alone speaks of competence and excellence at a governance level as well as in management. We've got a huge success story at the Arts Centre. It's one you backed with a grant of 1.83 million every year three years ago. And all that's changed is the people around this chamber. We haven't changed beyond getting better and more vibrant. We're now bursting with activity. We've got happy tenants and we've got an engaged and happy public. I'm sure you're all aware of the number of submissions that you've received that back fully funding the Arts Centre. Please listen to them. Please listen to us. We're in this together. Why puncture the bubble? It's working. We may not be being celebrated everywhere at the moment, but um, we are being celebrated internationally. This is a book published in Vienna. Um, 15 great cultural districts of the world. The Guggenheim, the Barbican in London, Gorky Park in Moscow, the Museum Island in Berlin, and the Arts Centre in Christchurch. We contribute strongly to one of the Council's strategic objectives, to be a cultural powerhouse city. This is to be celebrated. 
We bring international recognition to the city. It's unique and it's outstanding. Please don't inadvertently destroy it. We welcome your questions. Mm -hmm. um, Melanie, oh, Sam first, yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, thank you both and everyone for coming in uh, for this. It's, um, I appreciate it. It's, it's one of those difficult situations. Look, where I'm trying to get to is to sort of cut through the, the noise, so to speak, because it's obviously been a big campaign. I'm just looking at the website, which says, your website, which says, without council support, the Arts Centre will be on a path to insolvency. The trustees have resolved to start winding up. Uh, scroll down more for details, which I haven't scrolled down. I guess to, to cut to the chase, what is the, noting that you can't bind a future council, what is the actual amount of money you need in this coming year uh, so that insolvency proceedings don't start? Because I'm, I'm unclear as to what that number actually is. So what is that number? So the, the issue there becomes, what is an amount that would uh, the trustees see to ensure that the, the trust remains a going concern? Um, which essentially is not putting the trust in any worse position than it is today, which essentially is a cash deficit, which is around nine hundred thousand dollars. Right. So, so the grant, <coughs> excuse me, the grant. Oh, no, actually, I'm only allowed one question. I'll leave it. Okay. We, if we've got time, we'll come back, and I'm sure we have at the moment. We've got um, Kelly. Ah, uh, sorry, Mel. Did you have one? I've changed my question. She actually answered one earlier, which was good. Thank you. Um, and everyone loves the art centre, by the way. So. Um, what I wanted to ask is, with the Deloitte report, they had some scenarios in there, and I understand this isn't precise because it's all about future projections, but with those three scenarios, um, do you have any comments on those? Because, um, yeah. Yeah, I think you'd um, be wary of those because if you leave us uh, walking a tightrope um, and we lose one significant tenant, um, we'd be tipped into insolvency. The, the, the real issue is that in order for the trustees to have confidence that we are not a going concern, we, the Deloitte talk about um, the fact that with no funding we are insolvent within 18 months. Then the bar comes back when there is governors around, when are you insolvent and what do you know today? And so when we talk about um, uh, what level of funding we require, what will it be, it is kind of a moving piece, and it does re require the trustees and the board to make that assessment. Okay, then you're all done. Thank you all, yeah, we'll go again. We'll, we'll get time. Um, Kelly, please. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks for your passion for the Art Centre. Um, so, on page 45 of our agenda, it says the short fall of, fall of 1.83 million per annum grant could be partially subsidised from the Arts Centre's ring fence reserves in years one and two. Could you tell us uh, a bit about those ring fenced reserves? Sure. So the, the Arts Centre currently has uh, <coughs> cash reserves to fund its 35-year maintenance obligations for the hotel lease. So those reserves can be used to fund a shortfall in the short term as long as we replace those funds in the long term because those maintenance obligations don't go away. What's that total? Uh, the total is, in today's money, the discounted cash flow was $4.4 .4 million. Thank you. Um, Andre? Thank you. So Council sought legal advice on uh, the ability for the Arts Centre to get away with less um, arts and creative activity there. So what, what signal do you believe that that sends to the arts and creative sector that before we've received submissions, Council seeking advice on how to make the Arts Centre more financially viable with less arts, rather than how to make it more financially viable with the current level or more arts. So the delivering the objects of the, of the Act is a balancing act which the trustees need to make around how much is enough in terms of activation of arts and culture versus uh, protection of heritage. Uh, in terms of uh, an exact amount, there is no exact amount. The, the Act is all about subjective assessments on activities. The arts segment, uh, the, the requirement to nourish and flourish the arts means that we need to be active in supporting those in the long term. One can be balanced against another, but not for an extended period of time. We need to deliver all parts of the Act. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tim? Yeah, thank you, Marion Philip. I'm um, just following on. I think it's Sam's second question. What is the man? What's the amount you need for the, at least the next twelve months? 
so the, the trust board yeah. haven't put a specific number so haven't put a specific number yeah. on that yeah. I, i've given you my opinion yep. as a chair yep. as in terms of putting us in no worse position than nine hundred thousand. if you sorry you you did right the, the question probably is on the first of july if you don't get 900 grand do trustees start insolvency proceedings i think well, that was the second question sure okay yep. so I can outline the position of the trust uh, in response to this proceedings, which is that the, the uh, sorry, the Christchurch City Council will make its decision on funding the Arts Centre one way or another, and we will learn about that on 1 July. Until that point in time, we have not made a decision on whether the trust will be insolvent. However, as Deloitte outlined, if no funding is received, it is highly likely that the dissolution of the trust will then commence. Sorry. Um Thanks. Mine actually follows along from that, but kind of next stage. So my understanding from listening to all this and then Sam's question is that the 900000 potentially could be the sort of next 12 months. But if we're looking for a more sustainable model, um, if we only did the 900000 you'd be dipping into your reserves and we would still need to do something in future years to top that back up. So what's the current sort of next three year amount so it's not good to just going LTP to LTP mm. but rather than just doing that very short term come back in the annual plan what's needed sort of for the next three years and then sort of ongoing so the the short term solution um, uh, is around the number we've talked about 900 the the long term sustainable amount is around the 1.8 million which we've yeah. talked about so yeah. if for example we wanted to catch up the, if we funded for two years at $900,000, our shortfall would be $1.8 million for those two years. If we wanted to catch up in the third year, we would have to add that on. However, as Councillor McDonald talked about, we, a permanent solution to our funding would, be, uh, would allow the trustees to look past that three-year time horizon and to replace those funds over time. So for, I don't know, next question. Okay, you will yep. not have some time. <laughs> yes. We've got a couple, couple here, but I'll let you go again if we've got time. We will. Aaron, please. Yeah, and just on the time one, Mr Mayor, uh, I know we do have a gap at 4.30. Um, I'm, for one, happy that we use up some of that if we have to extend the questions. Just throwing it out there. Um, that is not my question. Uh, <laughs> oh, mine's way worse. Um, <laughs> given the overwhelming feedback we've had this year uh, that our current projected rates rise is just too high for people to be able to handle. Where does the money for you guys come from? Uh, that's not a question that I can answer. You don't see other things around the city. You go, you know what, an art centre is more important than that. Let's no, no, money. look, uh, we, we completely accept that the council is juggling a range mm. of requests and a range of uh, issues that it must grapple with. Um, but where, uh, how you balance your budget, um, I'm unaware of what else you're juggling, unfortunately, so I can't give you that answer. Uh, Pauline, and if anyone else wants one. Here. So, th thank you. The minimum um, requirement to keep you solvent this year, 900,000. Should we find a way to provide a rates remission of 200, would that then reduce to 700? Yes. Kia ora. The, the rates are currently 175. They've actually come down. But yes, it reduces our cash deficit, <coughs> yes. <coughs> Um, Sarah, please. Thank you. While, um, while we don't have a thematic analysis of our LTP submissions yet, um, an LTP to LPTP isn't ideal. If we were able to do three-year funding uh, at somewhere near the 1.8 to make that sustainable, um, but we only did 1.8 last time, and but then actually next LTP resolved to consult on a line item ongoing, um, would that be something that would be um, doable? I think I understand the solution, I think, and I'm sure the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, Yanni, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, in your submission, you talk about the risk of uh, external funding um, not, not coming in. I, I, I was just wondering uh, would be interested in just hearing from you as to um, what you're seeing in terms of those other funders in terms of trends over recent history and looking forward, e.g. Ha have there been approaches similar to what you've done with council for additional funding and what sort of response have you had 
particularly central yeah. government as well as philanthropic. Yeah, issues. sure. The, um, well, the, the, the big funds, I mean, but the problem is as we're an arts center and there is no national mechanism for funding arts centers. And there's nothing like this arts center anywhere else in the country. Um, so we're not a museum which has got statutory funding from councils, but um, forced by government. Um, we're not an art gallery. You know, we're not a performing arts company. We're a bit of everything. Um, and we're not eligible for funding from um, Ministry of Culture and Heritage, um, from um, Heritage itself, who only fund their own buildings. Um, we get one-off grants from um, the Arts Council of Creative New Zealand for specific projects. If we don't get the grant, we don't do the project. Um, and things like RATA, we've had um, great capital support from so um, um, to, for Tafari Tapare uh, for the uh, current exhibition that we're building of the um, Naitahu creation story. So they give us things for specific projects. But what we're talking about here is operational funding, and there is, um, there's no other source for us. Aaron? Aaron? Yeah, given you sit, you, and you mentioned the others, you sit in the golden triangle of the Museum Art Gallery and Art Centre. You have a million visitors a year. Uh, have you done a per head breakdown of your million versus the number that go to the museum versus the number that go to the art gallery, just so you're comparing? Yes. Yeah, we're... we're um, I haven't got the exact numbers. We're, we're, we're more than the museum. Um, right, thank but I you. think it's similar to the Botanic Gardens. Brilliant. Sam? Yeah. Hey, thank you. It's probably just going back to the website, because, um, again, you've run a very active campaign over the last wee while, um, which has obviously generated submissions. It, it still says that the council has provided no funding in the long-term plan. And I'm just sort of thinking, along with that, in saying that the trustees have resolved to start winding up, can you just clarify that position? So us? the trustees have not taken a decision on um, winding the trust up. Right, and the first bit around the council having no money in the budget. I'm unaware of any funding from the council and the LTP. We're, we're not currently in the draft LTP. Yeah, there's a bit of... Oh, we can clarify that later for you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Andre? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Um, one of the council recommendations in the document was around the market. Are, are you able to talk a bit about the changes being made to that? And, and mm -hmm. Sorry, can you just repeat the question? Uh, what, one of the recommendations in the council document was around the market. Are you able to talk about the changes being made to that and, yep. and to expand? On, um, this Saturday, we launch a, a new, improved, different version of the market, which will be four times the size um, and uh, please come along and, and join us. There'll be, there'll be lots and lots of stalls and activity and food and music. Yeah. Um, it's bigger than the previous version we had, um, which was on a Sunday. This will be on a, a Saturday and be on every Saturday of the year. And are, are you able to touch on the, the size of the market previously yeah. and what you're looking to get it back to? Aaron was allowed a two-prong, so I'm going to two-prong as the portfolio holder. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be much bigger. Um, and it, it brings in four times as much income to the Arts Centre. Thank, thank you. James? Thanks. Um, just to clarify an answer for another question, which I would appreciate. Um, if, if as a city council we decided to remit your rates by 200,000, you said that that 900k shortfall would reduce to 700,000. Um, you said that you have commercial leases, but in a commercial lease arrangement, rates are paid by the tenant, not the landlord, and the trust is obviously the landlord. So can you help clarify for me how a rates remission would help the trust? Because we, we, we pay the rates um, and the in the lease agreements. Well, I thought you uh, have commercial lease agreements. They, we do. They're similar to commercial lease agreements because they're a heritage site. The, the, okay. the, the space uh, that we charge, sorry, the, the price that we charge per square meter is benchmarked against uh, commercial, but our outgoings are not recovered in the same way as okay. a normal commercial lease. Okay, so you absorb the, the rates component of yep. the OPEX. Yes. Therefore, okay. Yep. All right, thank you. Okay, and the insurance part of the OPEX as well, you you in absorb that as well? You do not pass insurance on? We try to recover as much OPEX as we can, but we do not recover all our OPEX. Okay, thank you. Any more questions of anyone? If... Oh, look, brilliant. Thank you very much for coming in, very clear. And thank you to the councillors for all the questions that we did have. That's very good. Thank you. Okay. Right. We are now going to have a...
operate until five o'clock. If yeah, thank you. Sam, 